it's working. All right, so we left something right around here, right? Roughly. Of what? A clock? A clock. A sundial? Okay. I don't remember anything about a sundial, but sure. I was just moving the light around. Yeah. All right. So if I want this, this light to look at this object directly, I can go over here, select this object, and then hit the uh, live tool, and then hit the T key, and then snap it. So that, that light is hitting that object directly. So that's what the T key does for you, is to snap that point of interest to wherever you want in the, it to be in the scene. So I'll turn that off. Now, the biggest point you see here, especially when you render it, look at that backside, right? Really dark. We need to bring in a little bit more light. So what we're going to do is, unlike the real world, light bounces around the environment. So that's not happening here. So we're going to fake it. So I'm going to take this light, or you can make a new light, so whatever you want, control D. And you can see it doubles the magnification. So now we've got intensity of two because we've got two lights. But if I take it and I move it to the other side, now let's render it. All right, that's a definite problem, right? It looks like we have two major light sources in the scene. Why? <coughs> what setting is, is causing me this problem on this light? If I want this to be my main light source right here, this one is coming up, what do I have to turn off? Shadows. So come down, ray trace shadows, turn that off. There you go. Now, come, come on. There we go. There it is. Now this is starting to give it that this is the main light source. This one over here becomes a fill. The problem is the fill and the main light source are our key light becomes is the same intensity. So typically, rule, just as a starting point, whatever the intensity of this light is, which is like if I have it at one, the fill light should be about half as much. So we start around a point five. And then now when I re-render it, instead of just being just straight on this even light everywhere, we get a little bit of a shadowing. Let's get a little bit better angle here, like that, and re-render it. See how that's starting to look more natural in our render? Because we're taking other lights and mimicking light bouncing around the environment. That's what we're doing. We're faking it. Now, the other thing comes up. So if I take this object right here, Actually, let's actually move this guy. and I'm going to make another object here. Let's just do a simple sphere. All right. Get that to sit right on the ground. Maybe it's floating a little bit, but that's not the big deal. And let's put a different type of shader on this guy. Let's do a blend, and with this blend, let's crank up the specular roll-off and the specular color and make it really shiny. And it's going to go back to my point that I said before. We're starting to get two highlights there, right? 
One here and one here. Let's let's play with the eccentricity so we can get this a little bit more. I'm going to overdrive that by adding a higher number. Because right now, if you cranked it up, it went to one. But now I inputted a higher number, it actually is starting to overdrive that. Too, too shiny. Got to find a nice balance here. So I'm going to select this and do a render region. Or I can do IPR. That's looking pretty good. Let's do an IPR. So I can sit here and just tweak on it. Yeah, I'm just trying to. Oh, Chrome, you, you got to go more white. Yeah, there's reflective. Reflectivity, crank that up. And you start getting Chrome. But I don't want it to, for my object. There we go. We're getting another high, strong highlight over here. There we go. And it's starting to be. Let's take this one and just drop it down to like point, point 0.8. There we go. Now we're starting to see that highlight. Let me also blow this down too. Right there. See those two highlights? Look at that. That's not realistic. Especially if you're trying to pull something from outside. If you're trying to do some kind of outdoor lighting. This is, you know, first you want to color the light red. But... The two highlights is not realistic. So what you're going to do is whatever lights are going to be the fill lights, you take that, and remember that mitt specular? Turn that off. Now it's gone. And then it associates this light or this highlight with that light, which is our key light, or that's what we want. So emit specular on lights that are going to be used for bouncing light around has to be turned off, that emit specular. Whatever is your key light, turn that on. So that's typically a setup for that. So if I wanted to start figuring out like daylight, I would come in here. Maybe a little bit of a tinge of yellow, not too much. There we go. Start doing that just a little bit. Maybe crank that up to like one for sure. And then this fill light, if we're outside, should be what color? If we're representing... Uh, some color outside. We've got the main sunlight. What else do we have as a light source in our in, outside? The sky. What typically is the color of the sky in the middle of the day? Bluish. Kind of play play around with that, and we start dropping that in. All right. Let's take a look at what the render. It's starting to show us. See? There you go. We're starting to get something that represents a little bit of the day. Maybe increase it just a bit. Since I have the IPR turned on, it's really starting to show off that light. Maybe that's a little, that's, oh, that's the same intensity as the sun, so we don't want that. But it definitely has to be. And it's actually starting to fill in the shadow. Also, so if I crank this up just to kind of show you, look at the shadow. The shadow is starting to be more bluish also because the light from this direction is filling in the shadows. So that's what's happening here. So now we could, you know, we don't have a light source from the back side. I can take this light and let, I'll hit the T key. 
I'll duplicate it, control D, and I'll move it to the back side here. And maybe I'll drop that to be like a point. Let's do a point 0.8 on that. And then this one, a point 0.8. But once we duplicate the light, it just keeps those parameters. And there we go. So we're actually starting to get a little bit of a rim light because there is a light source on the back side. So let's just uh, re-render this real quick. There we go. See this back light right here? Now that light right there is causing a little bit of that rim light on the back side, which helps separate this object from the darker background. Let's also get rid of the reflectivity on this shader too. It's actually getting a little distracting. So I'm going to go to the blend, come down to reflectivity and drop that down to a lower number. And then now you can see, since we're using IPR, that's all interactive. Look at that. Yeah, it's really nice. It's not as good as a video game, but still helps out. So that's how you start playing with those shadows. So this is, this is what you would call a three-point light setup. We've got our main key light, a fill light, and a back light. So you get a little bit of that rim light on the back side. That's a typical um, three-point lighting setup there. Now, typically... There's light also bouncing off the floor. So light happens. It comes from the sun, hits the ground. Some of that light gets absorbed, but also bounces back up. So how do you mimic light bouncing off the floor and hitting your object? Well, you just take one of these lights right here. Well, I thought I was in the... There we go. I'll duplicate that, and I'll move it underneath and then whatever this light let me just make, put another Lambert shader here so we don't get ref, you know reflectivity and all that and let's uh, let's represent more of a ground color right a little bit more brown maybe right no what's happening is there's a lot of blue and a lot of a little bit of yellow it's actually starting to change the color so that's what's happening um, I could make it a little bit more intense, like that, make it more apparent. So here it is. I'm, I'm thinking this light. This light is going to represent light hitting the ground and coming back up. So typically, what you would do is you would need to change this light to a brown color to represent the light bouncing back up. Because what's hap what happens with light when it hits a surface, typically? It, it reflects off. But what does it reflect? The color of the object. So that, whatever, all, all light is, white light is representing of what color spectrum? All of them. It's all the colors all in one. That's white light. When a surface, a light hits that surface, all the colors get absorbed except the light that the object is or the color that that object is and it bounces back up so like an apple white light hits an apple blue um, pink violet um, green orange all that gets absorbed by the object the only thing that bounces off is red if you're talking about a red apple so that's what's happening here. So we're trying to mimic that particular light. Whatever that, that color is for that floor is what we're projecting back up. So off the ground. So if I go to this light, we go, oh, that's blue because we copied it from one of these. I also would also drop the intensity on it. So light starts to bounce around, gets absorbed. Less light starts to dissipate in the scene. We take that 
And then if I click here, Maya remembers all the colors you picked in the color picker. That's what this little channel is right here. So I go, oh, I picked brown for my ground. Oh, there it is right there. I'll just click it right there. And there, I'm using that same color. And now you can start to see it in, in here. So if I come in here, let's do another IPR. We'll select that real area. And there you go. A little bit of that brown is coming back up and hitting that surface on the bottom side. So that's what's happening there. Now part of the reason why that is working, watch this. If I do this, if I try to do this with this light, right? I'll take this light. Let's duplicate this light. And I'll do the same thing. I'll move it down here. And I'll crank it up. I'm not seeing it. Why can't I see it? Let's crank this up. Holy cow. It's not even there. No. Oh, there. Anybody? Anybody want to tell me what the problem is here? So I put this light underneath the ground. Exactly. It's because these lights, the shadows were turned off. This one, it was turned on. So this object becomes a big shadow. So the light is actually hitting this bottom area and not going through. So you got to be careful. If you're going to try to get a light to represent light bouncing up, you got to make sure the shadows is turned off so it passes through. So a lot of students make that mistake. They're not paying attention where your shadows should be turned on and where they should be turned off. And it all depends on what your settings are and what lights you're duplicating from. <laughs> here it worked, but it didn't work here because your shadows were different. So pay attention to that. Uh, default centimeters. Yeah, that's because particles and all that works better if anybody's going to mess with that. So it, there's a little bit right there. Um, any questions? Kind of the same thing? No? All right. So I had, let's see, I had somebody say they are having a hard time with a light passing through an object. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's think here. Well, let's, let's do a flashlight. I know it's in piece inside a piece of geometry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. No, I hate nerb objects when I don't want them. So basically, <laughs> it's doing an extra lot of calculations right now because I'm trying to do shadows and lights. Let's take this. I'm going to turn off caps right now so I don't need those extra subdivisions at the top. Um, let's put a few subdivisions on the height. So I'm, I'm just making a really simple flashlight here. Nothing spectacular. Right.
So what I'm going to do, I'm making this flashlight, and I'm going to separate this lens from the rest of the body. So I mean, it's not the greatest flashlight in the world, I know. But we'll just do this, and I'm going to do a mesh extract. I'm going to take those polygons and extract it, or separate. Let's do a separate. So it actually physically, uh, let's see, one piece. Oh, let's do an extract, sorry. And let's see if my crashes. No, no crashing. All right. Flash light. So that made a group in here. This is going to be the body. And then this will be the lens. Let's change the rotation on that guy. Right. I'm going to group all these lights together. Control G. And I'll call this demo 1. And I'll hide it. Control H. Once I've done that, So what light do you think is, you know, you saw the different types of lights that we had inside of Maya. What light do you think would mimic a flashlight? A spotlight. All right, there it is. We'll take this and we'll try to put that flashlight in the middle. All right, so this is going to be hard to get this perfect. There's a cool feature in Maya, which was introduced in Maya 2014. It's called project to center, snap to centered, uh, projected center, snap to projected center. They did that, did that, did that. I'm going to take this, turn this on. Oh, actually, turn that off. Let's do the, op the other object first, like this flashlight right here, or this light. Turn that on. Now we hit this, and then we just move this. And look what this does. It actually is centering it inside the flashlight for us. Look at that. To actually see what's going on, you probably have to press 4 on your keyboard to go to wireframe mode and see what's going on. Then make sure you turn it off, that projected center. And then hit the J key and rotate that over. All right, so we're actually putting this in, in here, right? Just like, you know, the bulb inside a flashlight would be. Let's also change the penumbra angle or the cone angle to a higher value right here. So it's, you know, it's going to come out roughly the same right there. I'm going to take this light and this flashlight and I'm going to group them together. So I'm going to take this spotlight, middle mouse click, hold, and drag it into the group. So I'm middle mouse clicking, dropping it in there. So when I grab the flashlight group and go to the move, everything comes along for the ride. I'm going to go to 5. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to get this really close to the ground here so we can actually see it against the surface. All right, so that light should be turned on. We haven't messed with any properties on that light itself. The other thing, too, is we got some extra history in here. So let's uh, do a delete type in history and kind of clean this up. There we go. That's nice. And before Maya becomes dumb, I'm saving this. Uh, desktop. <coughs> You're going to update that? Yeah, I'm updating both, but I turned off the automatic update. 
Okay, as long as you do, I didn't want to start doing that because then you have to remember to up, turn off at all now everything. So you might want to check flash too. But flash is a booger to turn off. Yes. But all right, there we go. All right, so I set up the light. There we are. Let's uh, let's render it. Let's see what we get. If my own. Whoa. What? Whoa. Good thing I saved. Dang, right? It's like it's like I knew it, it was coming. I learned my lesson the first time. Yeah, I just I just had a hunch. I don't know, I had a feeling. Is it Maya's been really kind of lagging. So All right, let's see if my Yeah, everything's fine. Let's let's do a render of it. All right. So, we got nothing, right? I mean, there is nothing in this scene. No lights. Even though we've got a light on. And then we look at the parameters for this light attribute. We go to shadows. It's turned on, which we want. We want shadows to be on because we want... You know, maybe we want this to cast a shadow here. So if I turn off shadows on that light, <coughs> it kind of works, right? It's working here, but it's not working here because we turned off shadows. Because we, what we're, what's happening is, this object will cast a shadow if we turn it back on. Boom, nothing. Because it won't get past this piece of geometry that's sitting right here. So, which is our lens. But if we, turn, if we turn off shadows, then we don't get a shadow for this object in front of it. So this is not working for us. We have to do something called light linking. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this light no longer have this piece of geometry affect it. This is no longer affected by this light. We're going to disconnect its association for shadows and light. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Window. Right above Settings and Preferences, where you go for Mental Ray all the time. So you should be familiar in this panel. <laughs> go to Relationship Editors, Light Linking, Light Centric. And this panel comes up. In here is all your lights in the scene and your groups for those lights. So right now I'm going to go to the flashlight, open that up, and there's that spotlight. So you can see, I click on that, and you can see this light affects all the geometry. Don't worry about these. These are like default shaders. You don't have to worry about those. Uh, I don't even know why they even show up half the time. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, wor don't worry about these. Only worry about groups and the little geometry. So everything is getting affected by this light. So if I don't want anything to be affected by that light, which is, again, this is the whole reason why you name objects in Maya. So it, it's easier to understand, especially when you get a panel like this. You're like, what piece of geometry? So if you've got polysurface 42, the heck? What are, you, what are you trying to... 
Yeah, exactly. What's that supposed to represent? No idea. Come over here, go to lens, boom. Now, let's try re-rendering it. Light passes. <gasps> Shadow. Dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the point, John. <laughs> anyway, so that light passes through that geo and hits that surface, and you get the shadow. So, but the problem is, this surface is no longer <laughs> being lit anymore. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to this piece of geometry, put a different shader, like a, a Lambert on it, and go to like an ambient color or an incandescence and kind of crank that up. Oh my God. And then re-render it. And it looks like this is like, you know, glowing from that surface. Right? Yeah, it's very similar. It's not as accurate, but you know, from a certain, if I start stepping back, and then I re-render it from there. No one's going to know any better, really. It's when you get up close, then you have to get really, really technical with it. But right from this distance, and again, it's all based off your story and what you're trying to tell and how close that camera gets to your objects. Again, that's where storyboards and, and animatics and all that comes into play because then it dictates how much detail you have to put into your models and your lighting because the stories, the cameras are already figured out. And how much time do I need to spend on this? Let's take a look at the animatic. Let's take a look at the storyboards. How, how close are we getting to the camera? Well, not that close. Oh, then I can be pretty generic with it. So that's how you pull that off. Lamp is a little different. Lamp, I'm going to show you another trick for a lamp. So that's, that's with like a flashlight situation, or you want to try to fake an, you know, a surface mimicking light. You actually have a light, and then you fake it with a, a surface shader, and you play with the incandescence. That's, that's how you take And then again, don't, you know, this shader, you want to call it, you know, you know, flash light shader, uh, you know, lens shader. So then you know <laughs> that's what that shader belongs to instead of this Lambert 42, which I like saying 42 a lot. All right, let's, let's do a lamp. I know some of you guys are trying to do lamps in here. Uh, let's do a typical lamp situation. Um, which would be a good lamp? I, there's two lamps you guys are kind of doing. Let me do... Let's do a cube. There we go. I'm going to get rid of the top of this, bring this up a little higher, get rid of this bottom surface here, right here, and I'll select this and I'll scale it in. Something like that. Nice square. Lampshade. Right? This will be my base right here. Just to be super lazy. Bring this down. I'll add a uh, edge loop here. And I'll build a simple base off that. 
So let's just do a simple extrude. There we go. And I'll put this ground plane and get a little bigger here. And then I'm going to take this flashlight here and I'm going to hit uh, control 8 and hide that. So we've got typical lamp situation here. So how do we get something going here? So you could do a real simple tool or light, create lights, point light is a nice point, is a nice, this can also be used for uh, candles also. So I'm going to stick that right at the top here. Right, right about there. That's pretty good. Hit four, maybe center it up just a little bit more, so you see it through the per the wire frame there. You know, maybe a light bulb there. Now I'm not modeling a light bulb. If I don't see it, why bother? I'm, I'm not going to waste my time making an actual physical geometry. If it's going to be in my shot, my camera's going to see it. Then I spend the time doing it. If not, I'm just going to put it in a light in there. So. Again, it all comes down to your camera shots and how you're placing your cameras. All right, so that's pretty good. Let's let's take a look at the settings. We'll start with the basic intensity. Um, shadows should be set to ray trace. Now that's that should be a good starting point. Let's uh, see what happens here. Maybe there's an option I didn't remember. And for some reason, I don't get a render view. The hey. All right, there we go. There you go. Simple. Let's let's start playing with the light radius a little bit. Get the little bit softer edges and so it's not so hard. <whistles> yeah, 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 yeah. It's working pretty good. Working pretty good. A little bit more. Let's start saving out these renders. Let's start cleaning up the shadow rays here so we don't get so much noise. Let's uh, go up to about, let's go about 10 for, sp I don't want to go too accurate, but I want it to clean up. I don't want long render times too much. There we go. Ooh, man. Let's bring that light radius just down just a tad. I might have to bring up your sh my shadow rays more. Again, it's trial and error at this point. Yeah. Let's bring this down some more and let's increase that. So I'm starting to go in the reverse of what I was thinking. But that's yeah, looking pretty good. You see, starting to see how it works? Now again, it's only working you know, where it's directly is being seen. So, you know, it's shooting lighting up through the top hole right here and through the bottom right so I know what I have to do if I want to start seeing the lamp in my scene I need to put lights outside of it but before I even start that let's let's add a little bit of a fall off the K rate here let's start seeing what that starts to look like start mimicking real light here Oh, wow. It barely gets outside the box. Let's, uh, let's enter 10 on linear. There we go. Look at the little bit of the fall off we're getting here. Might even want to go a little bit more yellow because we're doing a little incandescent lighting here. <coughs> There we go. Let's increase this a little bit so you can kind of see it a little bit better. See how it's starting to work? We have a little bit of fall off, a little bit more of the yellow. 
looking pretty good. Uh, before we push, you know, try to put some lights outside, let's take this and let's add, let's clean up some history here. Holy cow. There we go. And let's add a new shader and uh, let's do another Lambert. We'll call it Lamp, lamp uh, Shade. Shader. <laughs> Almost the same thing. Uh, and let's just let's do the typical green. Why not? All right. Let's start and see how that looks. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna save my scene just in case Maya gets buggy again. All right, so we need some of this light coming through this shader, right? That's where translucency kicks in, in the shader, right here. Let's take that and start to crank this value up. This is probably a good place to start doing the IPR. Let's do this area right here. Boom. Look at that. Right? And again, it's the translucency. So if I drop this, the value kind of comes down, crank it up. Just allows to see, you know, more of that coming through. Do what? No, that's my environment. I'm going to take, yeah, that's the environment. That's the actual, there's no other lights in the scene. And that, the ground plane actually bleeds off. To the top so that I'm going to I'm going to address that in a minute so there's that's a typical setup here doing it that way and again you can represent this with a candle too you know you have a little candle flame you want to put a candle there same thing again really start to play with that light and it's decay the more you you know drop this to get more accuracy like quadratic, you're going to have to crank this value up, the intensity, really high. Now, the biggest problem we have looking at this is that there's not enough light in the environment. It's only casting shadows because this geometry is like preventing the light to get out. So this, is, this right here is only a shader trick. So what I'm going to do is depending on what I, I, you know, I can take this light that's in here, duplicate it, and move it out. And then I could probably set that to a no decay right there. Just remember that this might need to be dropped in intensity. And I'll duplicate and I'll put another one over here. Duplicate, there we go. Bring that over here, that over here. The other thing I forgot to do was to turn off ray tracing on both of those. And then now, kind of go in there, and let's just see what that does. All right, too much. So we got some toning down to do. So I'll take these two lights in my outliner. I don't need to see them. And let's just drop that to, to like a point three on both of those. And there you go. Oh. Right? You know, you got to tweak the shader a little bit on this. Maybe it's a little too intense on the translucency. You might have to drop that down a little bit. Now there's more lights in it in the scene. It needs to be uh, compensated. But what happened is you needed lights around the, in the inside the environment 
to see, see the front of the object. The light was inside the object. It only shut off the top and the bottom. So you need sometimes to put lights in the environment, especially if you're going to be in an enclosed environment, like a room with no uh, windows or anything like that. So you can get some pretty good results from that. Now you can get all fancy. Watch this guy. I come over here, I can do an area light. An area light, actually let's take, go back one step. I'll duplicate this, move this over, and I'm going to move this down. 